I feel like to stand out and to be a better representative to my buyers um, uh, for growth in, uh, in my business. I think every realtor that works with buyers could benefit from this. Um, my background is commercial real estate mostly. Okay. Um, just through the evolution process, I've become a residential realtor. I've, and through the years, uh, I've got the GRI. The next step was ABR and maybe a couple other designations as well. But I thought it was important to have. The value, <clears throat> or articulating my value as an agent, as a buyer's agent, um, uh, buyer broker agreement, um, enforcing that, and how to use verbiage with your buyers and clients and uh, expressing your value really. Um, uh, the nicest part is a lot of things that I'm already doing with my buyers, which is great. I've been lucky to be in the industry for over 25 years and on the other end of maybe a few thousand contracts and closings. Um, so it's really neat to see, um, but definitely a, a little bit of a new angle on you know when to use a buyer agreement and when not to. Um, I don't think it's uh, you know just necessarily black or white. You know everybody needs it day one or never get it. I think there's a really good time and a place for it. I'm glad to see the document was updated by AAR not too long ago as well. I just wanted to up my uh, my game a little bit. Um, learning and growing is what it's all about. Yeah, you know, to continue to be a better realtor uh, for my clients. Well, I think one of the things that we kind of forget as as realtors is our value, and that we do we should get paid for our services. And the buyer broker agreement really helps set the expectations with the buyers as well as with the realtor what what they plan on doing and how they are working with that particular buyer. Uh, it sets out how um, how the interaction, how the relationship should be. And it's a very, very good, good thing to be able to be used.